Hello everyone, this is Husker Eurocat welcoming you back to Madden 19 for the PC and the New York Jets franchise. Last week, in a game that was closer than the score would indicate, our Jets fell to the Browns in the Battle of the Winless. This week it gets much worse for them as they visit Jacksonville to tangle with the Jaguars. The only bright spot for the Jets is that the Jags will be missing a key element of their rushing game. Leonard Fournette can only watch from the sideline since he tore his right bicep. TJ Yeldon will be subbing for him and we'll have to see how the Jets will handle him. I got word that New York is going to try Josh McCown at quarterback and that they added Damian Williams out of Oklahoma to the running back core in hopes that he will help shore up that run game a little bit. He's shown a lot of promise in practice this week, so we'll see what happens. For now, let's get set for the Jets and Jaguars here on the Football Freak Sports Network. Cairo Santos will boot it deep with Jalen Myrick deep in the end zone, and he will not bring it out. That will bring out Blake Bortles and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Starting at the 25-yard line, the fake handoff pass is incomplete. Bortles threw that over everyone's head. So on second and 10, the delay handoff to TJ Yeldon up the middle, and he's to the 31 for a six-yard gain. Now, on third and four, they have a false start. So it's third and nine. Bortles throws complete, but D.D. Westbrook goes out of bounds before reaching the first down marker, and that brings on the Jets. And off up the middle to Crowell, and he has a nice gain out to the 37-yard line for a seven-yard gain, second and three, bootleg. The pass over the middle is complete to Robbie Anderson. First down at the 47. McCown from the shotgun, fake handoff, throws, and it's intercepted. A.J. Boye picking that one out of the sky. Matched up against Quincy Inunua, and he didn't even go for the football. The Jags unable to do anything with it. It's back with the Jets, and McCown completes that one over the left side to Nicholas. First down and out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Now McCown fakes the handoff, throws, and it's incomplete. Robbie Anderson just could not hang on to that. Third and 10 now. Pass over the middle to Anderson again, and he has the catch at the 38-yard line of the Jags. Now the handoff to Williams, and he goes up the hash marks and has an eight-yard gain to the 30-yard line. Williams goes up the center again, and he has the first down to the 23-yard line. Three rushes. 14 yards. The Jets rushing game looks to have a boost. And that one is complete out to Anunwa and he is down to the 17 yard line for a seven yard gain. Back to pass again. McCown throws to the end zone and it's caught. Touchdown Jets. Troy Nicholas with his first receiving touchdown. Taking a look at this in slow motion, you can see he just jumps right in front of Barry Church and grabs that one out of the air. Touchdown, Jets. Capping off an eight-play, 53-yard drive. Now second and 10 for the Jaguars. Bortles back to pass. Shane Ray hits him as he releases, and it goes out of bounds. Third and 10. Another pass upcoming, throws complete to Mark Heasley. Kayvon Webster dives and misses, and he is free 
all the way into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Lee doing a little bit of celebration dancing in the end zone, but Blake Bortles, you take a look at that and just timed that pass perfectly. Hits Lee in stride. Kayvon Webster just tries to catch up with him, but can't make the play. And Lee evens up this football game. And after a jet three and out, the Jags have it again. Bortles back to pass, throws long, and it's complete. Keelan Cole beats Tremaine Johnson, and it's first down from the 37-yard line. Bortles back to pass again, and it's intercepted. Kayvon Webster wins this battle in the end zone. Lee barely misses that football. Definitely a 50-50 ball, and Webster comes down with it in the end zone for his interception. Second and 12 now for the Jets at the 18-yard line, and it's taken right back. McCown throws that into a crowd, and Miles Jack comes out whole mess with the interception, and you see it on the replay, and he just jumps right in front of Jermaine Curse. Uh, it's almost like he was playing center field there. So still 7-7, but the Jags have good field position here, and Yeldon breaks through and out in the open, and it's a touchdown, Jacksonville. Webster is just a little too late to stop T.J. Yeldon from getting his first touchdown of the afternoon. And boy, in slow motion, you see that move that Yeldon puts on Trey Boston, and it carries him into the end zone. Jacksonville takes the lead back after an illegal block in the back. The Jets have it at the 13, and it's over the middle and complete to Quincy Inunua at the 22. Back to pass, McCown throws to Nicholas, and he has it almost out at the at the 40, and that's a first down at the 39-yard line. Crowell takes it left, and there is a flag holding. And that is on Quentin Nelson, the rookie. That brings us to the two-minute warning with your score, 14-7. Jacksonville is winning at home. Third and 24 now, and that one is knocked away. Telvin Smith getting a hand in there. And that gives the ball back to the Jags. First and 10. Bortles back to pass and completes it over the middle to Severian Jenkins. And he fumbles the football. Picked up by Tremaine Johnson and back deep inside Jag territory at the 27-yard line. Jamal Adams jarring that football loose. And that gives the ball back to the Jets. Now with excellent field position at the 27, we need to see if the Jets can even up this football game at 14 apiece. McCown back to pass, has all day, and is runs out of time. Yannick and Gakwe getting to him for a second sack of the afternoon. Down back to pass again, throws complete and out of bounds, caught by Jermaine Curse on the sideline. Anderson catches that one over the middle at the six yard line. Now third and inches. Williams cannot get there. So that brings out Cairo Santos and he puts it through and he makes it 14 to 10 with that 23 yarder at halftime. Both teams a little bit sloppy with this football in the first half, and that is going to have to be cleaned up here in the second half. Damian Williams has made an impact, but not as much as I'd like to see. The Jets have it first here in the third quarter from the 26-yard line. The handoff is it to Williams, and he gets out to the 31 for a five-yard pickup. McCown throws. Straight at Bruce Carter, and I don't think he was expecting that ball, or it would have been another interception. McCown throws, and Miles Jack 
bats that one down. So Bortles and company will try again from the shotgun. Over the middle, Safarian Jenkins has it at the 50-yard line. First and 10 for the Jags. And Yeldon gets caught in the backfield, gets away from the first wave, and the second wave gets him for a five-yard loss. Third and 15 now. Bortles back to pass. Has all day, throws long, and it's in the end zone and incomplete. D.D. Westbrook cannot hang on to that. After a number of three and outs, it's Jag ball again. From the 18-yard line, Bortles gives to Yeldon, and he's up the middle to the 23-yard line. Third and five. The pass is over the middle to Austin Safarian Jenkins, and he has the first down. Second and seven from the 38. That pass is broken up on a diving deflection by Jamal Adams. Third and seven. Bortles back to pass, completes it to Westbrook, and he's out in the open. Nobody, I don't think, is going to catch him. Yes, he is caught by Trey Boston inside the five-yard line. And that puts Bortles over 1,000 yards passing for the year. Now on first and goal, Bortles is sacked. Avery Williamson getting in on that play. From the 10-yard line is third and goal. Over the middle to T.J. Yeldon. He does not get in the end zone. Tackled at the five-yard line. That brings on punter Logan Cook, and he boots through a 22-yard field goal. 17-10. Jacksonville is in the lead. McCown goes back to throw, and Anderson cannot hang on to it. The receiving crew today is not hanging on to the football, but he, in particular, is having problems. So on third and 10, McCown back to throw again, throws wildly and misses a Nunwa, crossing from right to left. And on come the Jaguars again. T.J. Eldon having a so-so day so far. Bortles gives to Yeldon, and he spins. Oh, and he's out in the open. 10-5 touchdown, Jacksonville. A 57-yard romp. And just when he was being contained, he gets another touchdown. That puts the Jaguars out in front, 24-10. Darnold is in there now. He goes back to pass over the middle. Williams catches it for a nice gain out to the 44 for a first down. Now on third and four. Back to pass again, and Anderson hangs on to this one down to the 34. Third and 10. A pass over the middle, complete to Quincy Inunua down to the 20-yard line. Donald back again. Complete to Jermaine Curse at the five. Now back to pass again, and Leggett cannot hang on to it at the goal line. Third and goal. The throw is intercepted. Miles Jack gets his second interception of the afternoon. That one was so far offline, even Miles Jack got a little surprised when he caught that one. Darnold threw it to him like he was the intended receiver or something. Now that gives the ball back to Blake Bortles and the Jaguar offense. At the three yard line, they are in serious trouble of a safety and Yeldon gets it out to the five. Thanks to those two touchdown runs, he has 14 carries for 103 yards. Bortles back in the end zone on third and eight, and he is sacked. Safety for the Jets. Terrence Brooks making the play in the end zone, and that brings the score to 24 to 12. Jacksonville punts this one away. Trenton Cannon didn't even come close to trying to catch that one, and it goes into the end zone for an 80-yard punt. 
Darnold remains in there at quarterback. And he throws an incompletion. Fourth and 10. And Nicholas cannot hang on to it. And that turns it over to the Jaguars again. On third and 10, Yeldon gets it. And he has a nine yard gain. Fourth and one, and they're going to have Josh Lambeau come out and kick a field goal, which brings it to 27 to 12. Darnold passes over the middle. Nicholas catches this one, and inside Jaguar territory at the 45. McCown is back to pass on first and 10. Throws long. And Robbie Anderson hangs on to this one at the nine-yard line. Six seconds left. Anunua catches it over the middle and into the end zone for the touchdown. He's happy about it, but I fear it's a little bit too late. It would take, I think, the weirdest onside kick that I've ever seen in order for the Jets to win because they only have three seconds on the clock. And it's recovered by D.D. Westbrook anyway. And that will be the end of your football game. All Blake Bortles has to do is come on and take a knee. And the game is over. 27-19 to 19 is your final score with Jacksonville winning at home. Miles Jack, your player of the game with two interceptions that really sealed the game for the Jaguars. There you have it, everyone. The Jets are now 0-4 on the season and officially at the bottom of the NFL since the Broncos tied the Chiefs moments ago. I would have thought they would have been able to win at least one game out of the first quarter of play during this season, it would seem that the accuracy of the quarterbacks is a real issue. I'm not sure what the problem was today, but if McCown and then Darnold weren't throwing the ball at the defense directly, they were wildly off target on a bunch of throws. Ending up with a total of three interceptions doesn't instill confidence that completing a pass can be a sure thing for this offense. And can someone tell me why it is that the Jet receivers can't hold on to the football once they get their hands on it? It's not like it was just one guy dropping passes out there today. A good number of guys just couldn't hang on to the ball. The rushing attack again was not there for the Jets, which invalidated signing Damian Williams this last week. The only thing we can say is that hopefully with time, and they'll be able to work out the kinks and run the ball better. I have a feeling, though, that this won't be a running attack offense until they can get a better O-line. As far as the quarterback controversy is concerned, looking at Darnold's performance in both the end of the Lions game and the end of this game, well, <laughs> minus that interception, of course, they have a possible quarterback. It's just the consistency thing that needs to be addressed. Let's hope that gets better with time on the field. Williams, at least in this game, didn't have any better average than Crowell has had. That, too, may take a few weeks to get better, but it sure would have been nice to see a marked improvement this week. I guess I need to remember that the Jags have a pretty good defense that bottled up the run pretty much at every turn. Now take a look at those drops by the receivers. If you do a little math, they dropped a third of the passes that were thrown to them. That is awful. It seems the only ones to escape the dropsies were Anunwa and Williams. I know that Williams only got one catchable pass thrown to him, but at least he didn't drop the rock. I could feel my blood pressure rising. Ugh. Turning our focus to the defense, while they let Yeldon out of the bag a couple of times, they continue to be the bright spot of this team. 
It would be nice to see someone else other than your safeties headlining the tackle lazy list. Uh, but I have to say that the D did a nice job of keeping the pass under control. Marquise Lee and Kayvon Webster had a battle on their side of the field, each having a big play, but unfortunately, Lee's win got the Hags, <clears throat> I mean Jags, seven points. Unfortunately, that when the defense loses a battle like that, the scoreboard usually lights up. But that interception in the end zone was outstanding. The acquisition of Shane Ray is proving to be a good one. On both of his solo tackles, he was in the backfield. He just has a good knack of disrupting plays before they can develop. After taking a look at the season stats for Darnold and McCown, we see that Darnold has a marginally better completion percentage, and even though he has six picks on the season so far, at least he has six touchdowns to go with him. McCown just has one touchdown to go. <laughs> One touchdown and five picks. Oh, that is just nasty. But I just realized something. They have 11 interceptions between them through only four games. No wonder the Jets are 0-4 on the season. I think it's a miracle that they're making the games as close as they are with as many times as they throw it to the defense. I certainly hope things change with time. There are a couple of players ready for upgrades and our superstar, Quentin Nelson, that has been moved to left tackle, is getting an upgrade and Coach Nelson decides to give him the agile boost uh, since it's in his scheme fit. And we only get two rating boosts and no overall boost. Really? I think that's the first time I've ever seen that where the overall doesn't get a boost. He does get plus three boost to the run block finesse rating. Hopefully that is going to help in the running game. Next up is Mario Edwards Jr. He's currently an 80 overall and Coach Nelson decides to go with his scheme fit as well and upgrade his run stopping ability. We get a lot bigger bang with four ratings boosted uh, with tackling getting a plus two boost. And that makes sense being on the, in the middle of the field the way he is trying to stop that run. With the difference being so close between he and Henry Anderson, Coach Nelson may have a hard decision to make on who is the backup. This could be good. Whatever decision gets made, the Jets have a good chance of getting their first win of the season this next week when they host the Denver Broncos. Remember that New York got Shane Ray in exchange for Bilal Powell and a fourth round draft pick. So this could be a rushing grudge match. Powell is their number one back, so we'll most likely get to see a lot of him. What the Jets can't forget is that Denver has the number six defense in the league, so it seems that they're having issues in the offensive arena, kind of like New York is. The D-line of the Jets should be able to have a good game against the mediocre Bronco O-line that seems to be struggling this season. But the offense has its work cut out for it against a tough defensive front headlined by rookie Bradley Chubb and veteran Von Miller. The thing is that it doesn't get much easier with the secondary having some pretty good talent as well. This definitely may prove challenging to the offense of the Jets to try to move the ball and could be a defensive battle, the likes of which we have not seen yet this season. The Broncos defense has allowed 26 points per game through four weeks. And I think that's kind of high. We'll see where this ball game is going to lead us to win number one or yet another loss. Thanks so much for watching. 
please keep in mind that if you enjoyed this video, leave a like so that others can enjoy it too. And make sure that you subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of upcoming videos as well. The Jets blew an early lead in Jacksonville here. Uh, if the offense can have a good game though, they more than have a good shot at breaking into the win column. The Bronco defense may have something to say about that and look to hold on to that number six league rating. Let's see if the Jets can start out quarter number two of this season with a win. Be with us as the New York Jets host the Denver Broncos back home in MetLife Stadium. And until I see you then, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day everyone.